How far has the Indian classical music helped to shape the music that you have today, which is a very classical music? Well, at a certain moment, it was very important for me. I was uh, 28 years old, uh, finishing my studies in Paris with Nadie Boulanger. And it happened in that year that I was hired uh, by chance, really, to work uh, with Ravi Shankar uh, as his assistant, notating his music and doing conducting. Um, there was a little French orchestra that we had to work with. And at that moment, uh, I, until then, I didn't really know anything about uh, Indian music. Uh, that was really my first contact with it. And uh, I was uh, very uh, impressed, particularly um, by the ideas of rhythmic structure. Because you have to understand, in, in the West, we, we, we talk about the elements of music being melody, harmony, and rhythm. But uh, rhythms, rhythmic structure is actually, in the West, not very highly developed the way it is here. Uh, in the same way that here uh, in India, uh, the harmonic side isn't developed. So there are things <laughs> missing on each side in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw what from my work with Ravi, and then a little bit later, uh, when he and Al Araka were in New York in 1967, I spent a few months studying with Al Araka also, uh, that, uh, that the idea of rhythmic, rhythm, rhythmic structure could become an idea that I could uh, develop in my own music. And it was interesting because it was a way of developing things in my own music that didn't actually sound Indian. In other words, uh, the Raga system I didn't uh, use. Uh, that is a dead giveaway for Indian music if you use the rock system. But if you use the idea of rhythmic structure, it doesn't um, have that particular, uh, if you take it out of the context of Indian music, it doesn't sound particularly Indian. And it can be used in, in any kinds of music. Mm. Uh, so this, at that time, uh, was a very important influence on me. And over the next uh, 10 or 15 years, I worked it into the uh, vocabulary, into the language of my music. Uh, today, it's uh, behind everything in a way. The idea of, of using rhythm as structure is in everything I do, and that has really set me apart from other Western composers and has given a, a particular kind of development uh, to my music that I wouldn't have had otherwise. You know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the things that you're playing this evening, which one would you point out to say that that's say that in which the Indian classical music, or the know, influence, the, influence the, is more point, pronounced? Uh, uh, I think the last one, uh, I'm playing a piece of Satyagraha, I think that there's that. Um, but I think also, uh, even in the very first piece, the opening, uh, where, you, where you hear really uh, an integration of a, of a rhythmic motif and a harmonic motif, which repeats four, three times to make the piece. I think in the very first piece opening, I think also you can hear it in the piece called Mad Rush. Uh, in a somewhat developed way in the bed of uh, music from Iceland on the Beach. So it exists now. I don't use it in the, uh, in the strict way that Tal uh, is used, uh, though sometimes I find it that way. But the music tonight is really the, uh, you see, these are pieces written after 1985 or 86, so that at this point we're talking about 20 years later. So 20 years later, ideas which were very difficult for me, have become very, let's say, natural to me. And you may not, they may not leap out at you in that way because I've integrated it so much into the music. Uh, then you did uh, Satyagra, which again has Indian That's a very connection. important Indian yeah. connection. Yeah. Uh, during the 70s when I was traveling, I spent, I've come to India almost every other year since 1966. Uh, uh, different, I've gone to different places. Sometimes I went to Kerala to see the Kali Kalamandala in Shuruturuti. Sometimes I've gone uh, uh, and visited uh, uh, places in the north, uh, in the Himalayas. Sometimes I've uh, gone to Madras at the Music Festival. Sometimes I've been here in New Delhi. Uh, I visited theater groups. One time I did one trip just to visit theater, and I was in Calcutta, and I was in Bombay. Uh, so I've had different trips. But in the first, uh, uh, during the 70s, I, I got uh, very interested in Gandhi as a, uh, uh, not just as a personality, but as a, as a uh, repository of uh, ideas which I thought were, felt were, was clear to me were perhaps the most important ideas in terms of political change and social change uh, of the 20th century. That virtually every political movement of the 20th century owes something to Gandhi. And it was very, and then uh, after my first opera, which is I Saw on the Beach in the mid 70s, in the late 70s, I was asked to do an opera by the Netherlands Opera, and I suggested a subject of Gandhi. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for the text, I used uh, uh, excerpts from the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. uh, which were selected 
to correspond to scenes of his life. And as you know, uh, 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 Mahatma Gandhi had used the Gita uh, as the basis of his moral actions in a way. He had memorized the Gita so that it seemed very appropriate to use the Gita as that. And uh, it might uh, surprise you to know that we sing it in Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. which no one in the West understands, of course. So what we do is, before each scene, we project on a screen a translation of the text that's coming. And so people know what the commentary is in a certain way, and then they see the uh, action is unfolding. We, I took seven or eight events from the, from the period of his life in South Africa, when he was uh, beginning the, uh, uh, his uh, nonviolent movement was begun there. Mm -hmm. was, uh, it well, it was great to come back to work with him again, I mean, in a very different way. And, I mean, when I studied, when I worked with him in 1965, I was really, I was assistant, but I was, he was really a master, and I was the student in a way, that was the relationship. So coming back with him 20 years later, and he suggested we do a record together, I was very flattered. We had kept in touch over the years, and he knew my music, and he thought it would be an interesting idea. As you know, he's done many experiments in East-West kind of things. Um, it was difficult for me to, to get over the idea that I was still, I still see him, as the master, and I'm the student. <laughs> it's 20 years later, and I'm 55, and I was 25 years later, and I'm 55, and he's 73, and I still see him that way. Uh, we worked together in Los Angeles for two or three weeks, working out the, the way we would make this piece. In the end, I gave him themes, and he made compositions, and he gave me themes, and I made compositions, and this together made a, a set of six pieces called Passages. Do you have any favorites in that passages? Uh, that uh, yeah, there's one called uh, Meetings Along the Edge, which is for me uh, using a, a very complicated rhythmic uh, theme of uh, Ravi's, and he gave it to me, and uh, he indicated that there were so there were there would be very interesting rhythmic solutions to it, and I took it, uh, and I and I finally worked out a way to do it in double time, uh, double time and triple time, all into, and so there's a kind of. Uh, a piling up of the rhythms together in that piece. And that was a very, uh, kind of a typical, uh, Ravi is very interested in, uh, you know, he's very good at the rhythmic uh, complications of music, and uh, mm -hmm. he p suggested this. Mm -hmm. um, then the other, uh, uh, I like the piece that he ends with, uh, his hymn, it's beautiful. It's a composition of his own, and it's very moving. Mm -hmm. How was it received? The, the I think it's been received extremely well. I see it around a lot. Uh, I've even, well, last time I was in Bombay, which was last year, for the in Bombay International Film Festival, I found it in record stores in Bombay. There are some, uh, there's a, a publisher in India who makes that cassette. Mm -hmm. I have a new project. This is, you may not know yet, uh, uh, Elsa Ramanian and I have an idea to do a piece together. Uh, right at the moment, the, uh, the London of Vienna has asked us to do a piece, and we've talked about doing that and maybe working out a, a touring piece that we could put together a group of uh, my musicians and his musicians and, and try to work on an evening together. So that's for the future. Our problem is to find the time when we can get together and to do it, but I think in 94 and 95 we should be able to do that. You know, of the uh, uh, pieces that you're playing today, um, can you describe a bit about Anima Mundi and Facets? Because Any what? Anima Mundi and... Anima Mundi, uh, which is uh, from uh, Anima Mundi is from a film uh, that I did with Godfrey Reggio. Reggio was the man that did the film Kalina Scotsi. Uh, this is a film of just images and music, and it's uh, become very well known, even known here. It, it played at the Bombay Film Festival in 1983, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm told it had a standing. I wasn't there, but I was told it had a standing ovation in one. This kind of thing, uh, but we've done a several other movies of just image and music, and. This was one based on animals, on, on wildlife. And uh, so the piano music is from that film. Um, Passage is from a record called uh, Glassworks, which I made in 1981. And uh, it's usually for a string orchestra and two sopranos. And John Gibson and I do it for, for piano and one soprano saxophone. You know, the process of evolution, as far as your music is is it still on? Do you still get I surprised? Feel, uh, I, I feel it is. Uh, uh, I still, there are many challenges for me in music. Uh, uh, I, I, as you probably know, I do a lot of work in the field of opera. And making opera, again, uh, an accessible, popular art form is something very interesting for me. Uh, I've done 11 operas now. Uh, the last opera was done at the, at the uh, Metropolitan Opera House in New York uh, in October. And uh, it was to celebrate the arrival of Columbus in, in the New World. But, I made it into an opera about uh, the spirit of discovery. 
made it. I work for a more universal <coughs> idea. Uh, I'm still working out on ideas, new ideas in harmonic and rhythmic development. Uh, the language of music for me is still fresh. Mm -hmm. It's still uh, 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 challenging. Um, it's still something that absorbs me. And uh, every new piece, uh, uh, I try to find a new way of working. 